Welcome to the e-commerce momentum podcast, where we focus on the people, the products, and the process of e-commerce selling today. Here's your host, Stephen Peterson. Welcome back to e-commerce momentum podcast. This is episode 26. Michael Markison met Michael and his wife at Jim Crockram's CES three. Struck up a conversation and immediately knew I had to interview these this uh, gentleman, and I, I was just really impressed. Um, first off, as for them as a couple, I could tell they were both into it. I always like to see that, and then just the, the knowledge that they offered, and again taking your business to next level um, by adding something else with minimal amount of effort, I think is worth uh, listening to. So in this segment, we're going to spend some time talking about uh, them and how they got into the business. And uh, Michael will walk us through that. So let's get into the podcast. All right. Welcome back to the e-commerce momentum podcast. And I'm really excited tonight uh, to have somebody who I just met. And it, it's interesting. I met him uh, at Jim Cockrum's CES three conference down in Louisville. And we just struck up a conversation. It was uh, Michael and his wife, Sherry, who I talked to, and it just immediately clicked. I could just tell these guys get it. And to see him and her talk so well together about their business, it's, I'm always encouraged when I see that. I mean, it's just such a great thing, and I think this is such a great way for couples to work together. So welcome, Michael Markison. Hello. <laughs> you are that uh, – it's going to be a tough interview because I'm looking at a picture of him with this giant smiley mug. And it's a giant yellow smiley mug. And he is known as the Nerd Picker. That's me. The Nerd Picker. So I mentioned that you have a wife, Sherry. And uh, tell us how tell us how you guys – did she start the business first or did you – or walk us back all the way through. Okay. Well, the story starts about five years ago. We were starting life over again. Um, I'm not going to go into that, but we moved to Virginia as a family with nothing. And with the help of relatives, we had to reestablish ourselves. And my brother-in-law was an accountant at a company that needed some warehouse workers. So I worked for the Christmas season and I got downsized and I don't like being downsized. So I had 13 weeks of unemployment that was available to me and I took it and I said to my wife, we have to start selling online. We, we have to do this. This is the only time to do it. We have to get, do it now. And so we, I pulled crazy hours just to sell anything that I could, everything that we thought of. And I recalled in my head, Jim Cockrum, Jim Cockrum. Oh, he had some. He had some kind of a course. He's got to have some kind of a course. So I, wait, wait, stop a second. How did you find that? Because that's interesting to me. So you were not selling online because I, I was not familiar with Jim until last year, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested when people say that they they heard of him or some. Did somebody point it out to you, or was it just you were looking for opportunity I, on the internet? Yeah, I, I was off the radar. Let's just say for a, a dozen years, and. Um, uh, during that time, I looked for opportunities online, and I knew that he had high integrity and high ratings in that in the field, and I knew that I needed to get a hold of him somehow. Well, he's such a powerful force. So I, I've just always wondered about that because there are some people that just have known him for so long, and I guess I didn't travel in those circles, so he's relatively new to me. But then I hear people that have known him a long time, so I'm interested in that. Um, that's great. So so it stuck with you, and you're like, hey, I remember that guy. So his marketing worked, and he is a great guy, and yeah. he is straight. So that's cool. Okay. So Go ahead. Sorry. So I, 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 in researching him during this time, you know, the time was spent, I had to take action now i had to start selling now so you know i had to replace an income to take care of my wife myself and our five children and and we started selling everything we could um books um media vhs tapes whatever we could find at the local thrift stores cheap and it was based on you know what i thought would sell which, was it on eBay only or Amazon too at that time? At the time, it was half dot com. Oh, okay. Right, right, sure. Right. Books. 
You know, that's where you sold books that you didn't have to pay for a listing. So by between um, Thanksgiving and Christmas of that year, we were doing between 20 and 30 merchant fulfilled. You know, we have to pack it up packages a day. And I knew that we had to change something because this was taking entirely too long of a day to with our homeschooling our children um, to to keep going. And um, it was during that time, during the end of the 13 weeks, that we were we made more. Well, I I, co- I was able to cover my income from the nine to five job. It's incredible. I mean, just think about that. So in that period of time, that quickly, you were able to start a business and you didn't have a lot of capital. You said that and you were selling stuff you pretty much already own. That's an amazing story. I mean, it really is. And do you think that's still doable today? Would you say, Michael? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. And that's the answer I was hoping for. So, so you, uh, at that point, it was still half.com. At what point did you move to eBay? Uh, we, well, we started just putting more stuff onto it, and then we put it onto Amazon. We were considering some of the software and services out there that could list it in several different places and, you know, have that one fulfill that one. And it's like, ah, I don't know what to do. So I was lost. I needed professional advice. And around Christmas of that year, we heard about the Proven Amazon course from Jim Cockrum. And my wife and I discussed it. And we was like, this sounds amazing. And we contacted Jim, got the course. And from there, within a few weeks, we sent in our first shipment to, to the Amazon warehouse. And we said, wow. So it took you, so you bought the course. Give me a, a, a basic uh, frame of reference. So, you know, was it, you know, January when you, you took the course? It was or what month? The would... beginning, the very beginning of January. Okay. And so how many weeks did it take till you were confident enough to get that first shipment into the FBA? We had to learn it quick. We, we My wife and I were dedicated. It probably took us a, about a week or two. No kidding. So in two weeks, you were able to dissect his course decipher enough to get you going. And I'm sure it was sloppy in the beginning, yes. like every one of us do, because we all do the same exact thing. There are there are ways to put books in a box or you know, toys in. We all learn that over time. So that's not unusual. But in two weeks, you were basically able to take a business that, you know, you had to put together and, and, you, you, and you were doing okay with now to adding a huge staff in essence, right? Right. And, and, and it was very sloppy at first. We, we only sent in one one decent sized box into the warehouse just to give test it out, see how the system would work. You know, we money coming out of our pocket to ship it out to them. And we didn't know, you know, and th- when that first thing sold for like a, a $4 profit, we were like, Oh, Oh, that was nice. You know, it was more $4 more than we, than we had. So it was like, Oh, great. And then started seeing more sales and more sales and more sales. And we said, let's stop doing Merchant Fulfilled. Let's stop doing it. You know, there's 20, 30 packages a day. We don't have to do that anymore. We can just send it all into Amazon and they'll take care of it. And we'll get, we'll just, we'll just keep getting stuff to send in once a week, twice a week, whatever we can. So this was 2011 or 12, right? I mean, this is pretty early on in the FBA world. I mean, yes. they, they, you know, so you were one of the early adopters. So, <laughs> and it it was harder back then because the services weren't as good as what they are now, the listing services and, and the labels and all that kind of jazz. So right. that was pretty hard work back then. I remember doing the 30 up labels yeah. and I think people still do it, some people. And I'm I'm like, oh man, I, I never kept track of the product. And then you try to have a match and they look so yeah. close and the label, <laughs> that was very painful. I, I learned very quickly, I got to get a Dymo. So. And, and I did it with the inkjet printer. And so at that point, we, did you stop selling on eBay? Um, well, Yes, we we moved it all to to Amazon FBA at that point, and my wife continued doing stuff on eBay, 
you know, just various collectibles and it, things that we might have had more of that we didn't want to send all of the stuff into the Amazon warehouse. So she's grown her business on on eBay from that, and we've continued growing together on Amazon to the point that it, the Am- Amazon really is what's paying for, for us to live as a family. And her eBay, she's an eBay power seller. That's impressive. And she's making her own money doing that, which that alone is quite a bit more than I was making in the warehouse in the nine to five job. Does she have a specialty that she's uh, selling on eBay that she's able to just know it so well? And her her specialty is basically things things now that we pick up that can't sell on Amazon uh, for various reasons, hazmat, um, but that are still legal to sell um, normally. Um, things that show up that for price reasons wouldn't wouldn't work out on Amazon. Um, things that are slightly dented that really couldn't be considered new that we didn't want to sell used. Um, so that's basically where the kind of stuff that we're doing. It, we don't have like a whole, you know, a, a one one item that we have hundreds of that we sell everywhere or a certain niche or anything like that. Are you also able to sell returns? Um, you know, the long term. You know, I just got my long-term shipments or you know storage stuff back. Are you able to sell that on uh, eBay too? If yeah, if, if we don't want to hold on to it and send it back to Amazon, we could move it by putting it on eBay. So she goes through that stuff and makes piles of things that she feels that are better to be sold on eBay at this point. So she's got several hundred items at her uh, on her eBay store. And she's doing quite well with that every night, just sitting in front of the TV with her computer and just listing a few, you know, few products every single night and processing them in the morning to send out. Well, I'm going to call that my first nugget. So here's the here's the the real deal. If Amazon shuts down your account tomorrow, you're not in trouble, trouble because you have a B plan. Your eBay store, and I, I gave a, a speech um, earlier this year in, in Baltimore, and my comment was this, is get your eBay store up and running because when you start an eBay store, they limit you to 10 items or something like that and $100 or $1,000, whatever it is. And it, there is a, a time it takes to make some money. So you're in a position that, you know, God forbid something bad happens on the other side, you could – quickly scale up that other business and have a B plan. Yes. That, that, and, I mean, and I do have my own eBay um, accounts that is kind of, kind of just sitting there uh, on the shelf right now. But um, her, yeah, hers is well used and has several hundred items in it. And if we had an issue, we have enough stuff around the house to, that I could go crazy posting listing with listers and various services out there and easily turn over everything to to eBay. And yeah, we could be crazy eBay sellers. Yeah. Just for a period of time. I'm in a couple uh, at CS that um, now is heavy into FBA, but they were doing $200,000 a year on eBay. And I mean, it's an impressive number when you think, because usually the margins on eBay are higher than what they are on Amazon because you're doing some more of the work, right? Right. So, you know, you could say it's their higher margins, but, you know, not factoring in your labor. They, they, you get more money, but you're doing the work and Amazon takes more money because they do the work. And, And of course, during, if that should ever happen, we would, you know, also look at all the various services out there that could help an Amazon seller get their account reinstated. Right. I, I saw three of them pop up today, um, and I know that was a topic at the con- uh, at the conference. Um, I saw three services, and I, it, not that they popped up, but they they were noticeably advertising today yes. because there is, you know, I mean, let's face it, Amazon's not dropping people just to drop people. They want a problem fixed. And and sometimes a problem looks like a problem when it really wasn't or it wasn't very clear. And so these people help you dissect that and get it clear. So I agree with you there. So, you know, one of the things that you and I were talking about um, at the conference that really, uh, that made me like, huh, this guy really gets it, um, was Bonanza. And, you know, 
I always discount Bonanza like I do Sears and um, maybe Newegg a little bit. You know, just they're not giant markets. Um, However, you've done something um, pretty interesting, and and I really want to unpack it because I think I I just think it's such a great idea, and it's so easy to do. And you're going to walk us through it. So let's take a break, and when we come back, I'd like you to walk us through a the logic of how you got started in it and what your thinking was how to do it, and then are you where you thought you would be? Okay, so let's take a break, and we'll be back in a moment. Today's podcast is brought to you by Seller Essentials, essential business solution for online sellers. Whether you sell general merchandise on Amazon or eBay, private label your own product, or if your focus is selling books, wholesale products, or liquidation lots, let Seller Essentials be your online resource for all things e-commerce. Essential resources, essential solutions, Seller Essentials, the Internet's premier venue for online professional. Visit SellerEssentials.com for more information. That's SellerEssentials.com. All right, before we get started, I just, uh, I'm really interested in this section because I think this is something for we all have to be thinking about, is how do you add another channel with the minimal amount of effort? Well, Mike is going to walk us through the details of how he was able to take his separate Amazon and his separate eBay and bring them over to Bonanza. Yes, Bonanza still exists. You know, he sold 150 items so far this year on Bonanza, so it's worth listening to. And more importantly, it really is going to teach you how to take your Amazon listings or your eBay listings and bring them to another channel. Right now, that's the third channel. What if there's a fourth and a fifth and a sixth? It's coming. It's coming down the road. So getting that knowledge now, I just think is a great um, a great thing to learn, and, and it's, it's free, free to list. Let's get back into the podcast. All right, we're back, and we're talking with Michael Markison, and uh, Michael is a uh, significant Amazon seller. His wife is a significant eBay power seller, and uh, together they are a power couple, and they work together and know the business. And, you know, really interesting to me that you're able to take product, and, and like you say, a couple of them get dented or whatever, and they're always in there. You think you got it right, and you miss a couple, and yet, you know, you're comfortable enough that it can just go right up on the eBay business. I just think it's so smart instead of letting stuff pile around you because it will pile quickly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know <Yes>. that. <laughs> So what we, what I asked you to talk about now is um, the thing that really struck me and held me in conversation with you, and I know you had a million things going on, and I was like, wow, I'm just really blown away because you're not the first person I've heard that, that takes listings and puts them on Bonanza. You're the first person that I know that takes a unique Amazon account and a unique eBay account and merge them together on Bonanza. I'd not heard that. I didn't know you could do that, and that's news to me, so I'm interested. So So why – how did it come about to 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 go on Bonanza? Um, just another marketplace to sell the items. Um, it, they were a, able to import and sync the Amazon account and the eBay account together under one list under one store, and um, it, with the ability that when it sells on Bonanza. It will go back to Amazon or eBay and cancel out the order there so so that person can't order it both places for around the same price. Because I've heard of that happening, yes. and that's a danger, right? So so let me just ask the, the – my mind races ahead, and I have to know the answer before I can move on because my mind will get stuck on it. Do you use Joe Lister from Amazon to put it on eBay? Not yet. Okay, because I wonder, you know, if you can put them in a circle like that, you know, what happens there and it gets a loop, Ooh. right? So the sa- yeah, and I don't know whether the system can handle if that's a, maybe a little too sophisticated, but let's face it, that would be pretty awesome if you listed every single item you have on Amazon and put it on eBay, the things that wouldn't go on Amazon, yet mm. they still can get fulfilled. I mean, I, I just, I wonder, I mean, are we heading, that? it sounds like we're heading that way. It sounds like Bonanza is sophisticated enough to be able to handle two different marketplaces, and they're completely different marketplaces. Right. It's not like they're the same. There's nothing very similar about them, right? right? And and so, how hard was it? I mean, which which one did you set up first? Did you set up the eBay link or the Amazon link, or did you do them at the same Amazon. time? Amazon. Okay, so Amazon. So so walk us through. So how does somebody go about creating a Bonanza account that? 
um, is linked to an Amazon account? Well, it, it's just a matter of um, well, just just like there's like these Facebook uh, linkages all over the internet. They you know log in with your Facebook account or or whatever. It's they, they had me just click a button to log log into my Amazon account. And it would take me to a page that would bring up authorizations for me to to link it because they needed they Amazon needed the permission from Bonanza to link the account. And okay, so they you're linking the account specifically. So it's saying, hey, this is my account. Right. Do you does it automatically take every listing, or are you able to exclude listings or exclude categories? Um. Right now, um, I. I believe it's everything. Okay, and, so it's everything or nothing. Right, and and then they ask you if you would like to uh, give it a little discount since the fees are so much better on Bonanza and to give just a slight incentive to someone buying it on Bonanza versus Amazon. Okay, so let's talk about that. I'd heard that from somebody else, or maybe it was you even, saying that the fees are that much lower. So um, – are you so if an item sells on Bonanza, you're going in and saying multi-channel fulfill, yes. Amazon ship it to yes. them, right? Mm-hmm. So, so do you still have to pay the pick and pack fees from Amazon? You, you do the multi-channel fulfillment uh, fees. You know they still need to get paid for their pick packing and shipping it out to the to the buyer. Um, they don't care where they're going to send it. They just want to get paid for their services because the item was legitimately in their warehouse for you know, a few weeks to a few months or even a few years. And from what I understand, though, the savings in shipping, because Amazon shipping rates are so incredible, yes. more than offset additional fees. Is that still the, the way you understand yes. it, too? So, so it's cheaper if it sells on Bonanza. So you're doing a happy dance when an item sells, even though now what percentage did you discount it from Amazon, if, if 1%. any. 1%. Okay, so 1% cheaper. So let's just say an item is going to sell for $30. So you took that 1% off. So it's a minuscule amount. Correct. What other fee? So you're paying the pick and pack fees no matter what, but you're paying a discounted shipping, which probably more than offsets that. What other fees does um, – who, who accepts your payment? Is it linked to a PayPal account or is it linked to your Amazon account? PayPal. Okay, so it's PayPal. And then – so you're paying the PayPal fees, of course, right? That makes sense. And what does Bonanza take as a percentage? Um, I'm not exactly sure of the percentage, but it's definitely cheaper than Amazon or eBay. I think eBay is like 15%, and I think Amazon's a little yeah. higher than that. So, so you got. You, so you still have your shipping fees with pick and pack, but that probably almost covers what you would ship if you were merchant fulfilling it, right? right? And then you have the, e, the the PayPal fees, which are cheap, pretty cheap, um, and then you have that. And, <laughs> that's just fascinating and, and, to and me. And the nice thing is, like, I, I closed down my some of my merchant fulfill listings for Amazon, and my, and, and, but when for Bonanza, I'm like, eh, we'll just keep that going. And there was a couple items that I, when I was at the hotel at, at CES in, in Kentucky, I I had to do some cut and pasting of the address and doing merchant doing some uh, multi-channel fulfillment while I was there. No kidding. So walk me through how does multi-channel fulfill? So so the item's sitting in Amazon's warehouse, right? And in this scenario, because we're using the Amazon account. So you sold the book. It's sitting in Amazon's warehouse. It was automatically listed on Bonanza. They, for whatever reason, found it on Bonanza, which we'll talk about how they find it there. But they found it. You get notified, hey, you had a sale. It's not an automated feature. Or, or, I think there is an auto MCF software. There are a couple out there. You don't use any of those right now, which automatically tells Amazon to ship it? No. Okay, so but you can you got notified? Hey, I had a sale. Right, I get a, I get a PayPal notice that I money just dropped in my account, and I get a notice from Bonanza saying, "Hey, you have a sale," and here's the here's their information from the email, and so I just double check to make sure the money is actually in my PayPal, and then I'll go over to Amazon to to find the product and say, "Hey, I need to multi-channel fulfill it." And pops up the address 
uh, the address uh, fill-in area and just copy and paste the name and the address. And for the order ID, I put BNZ hyphen and then the, the Bonanza order number. So in the Amazon system, I know that those are my Bonanza orders. So, so you're selecting a package and then – and you, there's a. I mean, do you go into your inventory system? I'm not certain how that works. Um, I've never done it, so I'm not not certain because there is no order showing up in, in Amazon. I'm familiar with all the right. order system in Amazon, but in this scenario, you have to go find it right. in your inventory, which right? The the SKU number that Amazon has for it is still the SKU number in Bonanza. Oh, that's sweet. So you just copy and searching for that. So you go into manage inventory. Yes. Is that where yeah. you go? Or okay. manage FBA so inventory, either or. Oh, okay. And then you select the item, and then you choose an option. Yep, um, just from the okay. pull-down menu at the top. Okay, I'm pulling it down because I want to see it. Is it create fulfillment order? Yes. It must be, mm-hmm. right? Okay. And then I'm going to actually do one because I've never done yeah, one yeah, before. Yeah. And so, oh, okay. And so you're just – it says ship to address. Yeah. So you fill in all that information. The order ID, is the order ID something right. you, you – that's what you said. You put in a Bonanza little code? Correct. The Bonanza, okay. basically the Bonanza order number. And then, um, let's see, and you can put in their email, um, and you can put comments then, in if it looks like. Then, then the next screen would give you the ship shipping option of regular standard shipping, or you could do a two-day or a one-day. Oh, wow. And so depending on how much they've actually paid for shipping, and it's, I usually will just, Send it standard, and it takes a few days for it to go from the warehouse to the person's house. No kidding. Boy, that is just so easy. Um, I don't know why I haven't done it. I mean, it just sounds so easy. Um, Now, I think that answers all my questions because you get paid then through PayPal. Uh, Amazon takes it out of your seller account, right, as a fee. It's just a shipping fee. Okay. So let's talk now on eBay. So you go back into that same Bonanza account, and it lets you choose. Does it let you choose other uh, sales channels too, or is it just Amazon and eBay? Um, those are the only two that I use, so I'm not sure if it does any others. I just wondered if it did Sears or Newegg or something, because I could see Newegg being a really great one to use with Amazon yeah. fulfillment because um, of the electronics and stuff. Okay, so let's go to eBay. So in eBay, I mean, so basically you're signing in Bonanza. It says, hey, give eBay permission again. Yep. And so basically the same premise. Right. Do they also ask for a discount at that point yes. because they're suggesting that they're cheaper? Yes. Okay. And did you use the same 1%? Yes. And then now on eBay – you're not merchant. I mean, you're not multi-channel fulfilling from. Not necessarily. I guess you could, in theory, if you if you were selling it on both, you could. Um, but you're saying, oh, I have this sitting in my shelf in the in the garage or warehouse or wherever you have Correct. it. And so you just uh, then just go into using PayPal to ship. Is that what yes. happens? But it automatically still takes down the listing in eBay. Does it automatically take down the listing in Amazon too? Does it adjust your quantity? Yes. Mm-hmm. I was wondering. Okay. Okay. So if you had twenty of an item, it automatically says, "Oh, you only have nineteen now." What? what uh, as soon as you, as soon as you do the uh, order. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. That there. That that makes and sense. And you have okay. to rush to, to it before someone else gets to it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So there is a little bit of a. Every on once in a while, I'll have one that I go, ah, someone got it before. Ah, oh well. And then I'll have to cancel it and refund the money and. That's not fun, but the, it's it's it, it happens less frequently now. Okay, because you're on it because you know it's going to happen, so you make it a, a. Now on eBay, it doesn't happen because you haven't shipped it yet, and it it automatically took the sale down, right? Is that the difference? Right. Mm-hmm. And so you get notified, hey, you had a sale, basically the same way, and then it automatically closes the eBay. What if you have five of them? Does it lower the quantity? Um, it doesn't. I have- Close the eBay listing. I don't it? know. I haven't. I haven't come across that one yet. Okay, that'd be interesting. I assume that it's smart enough if it can adjust the. Yeah, quanti- I would. Uh, I would think that it would just be a quantity issue. Okay, and so then you do the same thing and, and send it out like right. that. Right, and wow, and by crazy. the emails, I'm I'm I could tell by that if it has a skew or not 
from Amazon was like, oh, wait a minute, that's uh, one of my wife's ones that's on eBay. And then I just yell for her to check, it, you know, just double check to make sure for on her end so that cause, so she could process the uh, eBay item because I don't know where she hides her eBay items. <laughs> you they're don't want they're all right. over the place. So so let's explain to me this. How, I, and I don't. We'll talk traffic in a mm-hmm. second. But how many items since January has have you sold on Bonanza through Bonanza? Um, I would say now it's probably about 150. <laughs> okay, I want to pause for a second. 150 items. It's in September, so we have eight months and in, in a little bit. So you're selling 20 items, 15 to 20 items a month. On Bonanza, at lower fees, sometimes it's the extra work for you is to cut and paste into Amazon, yeah. or you know, there's no extra work for eBay because you're it's the same thing whether you ship it or whatever, right? So it's been a great channel for you, wouldn't you yes. say? You know, so here's a couple of reasons. You know, we talked a little bit earlier offline, you and I did about why somebody would use Bonanza, right? So you've already said it's got lower fees. Yes. Number two, you said it is simple. Basically, you open a Bonanza account. There is no charge to create a Bonanza account, correct. correct? Do they charge you fees to do the listings? No. So, so, so opening account, opening a third channel is that easy. Can you also then individually just – I don't know why you'd want to do this, but let's just say you were, you're having success with it. Could you list specifically in that same Bonanza account just for Bonanza? Yes. With no fees again? With no listing fees, no listing fees. So, so you can open an account. You can. Um, I, I just can't understand could, why somebody wouldn't do it. You could take a list from some supplier, upload everything into Bonanza, and when it sells, you could drop ship it or get it wherever the supplier is locally, and then send it on out. <laughs> and my bet is there are people doing I'm that. Sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> you know, here's the thing that I think the reason that somebody should go on Bonanza. First off, you're selling 150 items that you might have sold them on eBay. You might have sold them on Amazon, but they found you on Bonanza for some way. So there must be traffic that they're getting. And I'm sure it's not even close to any, you know, eBay and, or Amazon. And, and sometimes the item that they're getting is more expensive on Bonanza than it would be if they looked in Amazon and checked out all the other buyers, sellers. Hmm. It, it would, it would just, it, it would, they're like, wait, they could just go to Amazon and get a whole lot cheaper. Why are they buying it on Bonanza? I, well, I it might have something to do with the search. Yes. You know, one of the things not that long ago, I think it was last year, eBay and Google had a problem, right? Google changed their algorithm again, mm-hmm. right? And you know they're going to change it again because yep. they're going to get better at it. And eBay lost an enormous amount of traffic. I think it's been almost a year mm-hmm. now. I mean, an enormous amount of traffic. So if the item, I mean, here the question would be is, did uh, Bonanza lose that same amount of traffic? If not, all of a sudden Bonanza listings, because they've been following whatever eBay or uh, Google wanted them to do, they could technically, uh, you know, get higher search uh uh, rankings than uh, eBay or maybe even Amazon, right? If your seller account in Amazon is weak, mm-hmm. you will definitely go down in the listing right. in the search. I'm assuming so. Maybe that's why Bonanza, uh, you know, showed right. up. And in the back office of Bonanza, there is an advertising feature. And again, I'm not paying for any storefront or the extra added bonuses that they might have. Um, because I just wanted to stay free, and and with it they had like five tiers of various advertising that per item or whatever that it would be this percentage if you went with the small plan, this percentage if you went with a little bit bigger plan, this percentage if you go with the major plan or 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 whatever, and I see that the traffic has steadily increased. In in Bonanza, and they even show it show you the graph of how much more uh, how much more traffic your 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 web store on Bonanza gets, and I I I believe that they're sending out the information to Google Shopping, um, so 
they're showing up in the Google search terms um, and other places on um, eBay even they that actually advertise as a sponsored ad in eBay. <laughs> so you've, I mean, is there a reason that somebody shouldn't be doing Bonanza in your mind? Not that I can think of. Yeah, yes, they are minuscule in, in terms of Amazon and eBay being big, the big house power places of commerce. But for a free extra channel, um, you know, even as it started off as a hobby, you know, throw some items up, you know, combine your accounts, list them back and forth and, you know, give it a try. Do they have special tools or anything that helps um, any of the other businesses, um, sometimes some services and things like that? Do they offer anything? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Well, like uh, I'm, I'm looking at their site and I see that they have something about removing picture backgrounds oh, yeah. and stuff like that. Okay, so is that have you ever used them no. because they have a better tool than eBay or anything like that? No, no you're not no, experienced. I, I, okay. I'm enough of a, of a nerd that I can use Photoshop or, or other services online that are free. Okay, okay. Well, you know what? That is a fascinating story, and I think it's a great story because, again, it costs you nothing. Yes, there's an investment of time to set it up and all that kind of jazz. And yeah, when you have a sale, you got to do a little bit of work. First off, there's no additional work versus eBay. Right. It's the same. Right. Right, there's no additional. So anything you sell that was going to sell on eBay and it sells on Bonanza, the only difference is it's cheaper. So you save money. Yeah. Huh? That's a yeah. good thing, right? Note to self, that's a yes. good thing. If it sells on Amazon versus Merchant Fulfill, it's cheaper because you get their rates of shipping, which are cheaper than anybody that you can get, mm -hmm. covers their additional fees. You don't have to do the work. All you have to do is cut and paste. And I mean, I just can't think of a reason that you wouldn't want to do it. And again. Something happens to your, you know, I, I imagine if your Amazon account gets shut down, the feed to Bonanza would shut down. I mean, logically, that would make right. sense. However, your eBay does not shut right. down, right? And neither does that feed to Bonanza. And so I think having a, an eBay account, I, I suggest it to everyone that they have it. Now with Joe Lister, the beauty uh, of having an eBay account. And, you know, I think that the real reason you would want an eBay account with Joe Lister is you're still not merchant fulfilling, right? You're staying out of the shipping plan. Mm -hmm. But if Amazon shuts you down, you have built up a successful eBay business that you could quickly go and start shipping your own stuff if you had to, just to survive, right? Correct. So I just think this takes it full circle, Michael, and I, I just think it's a brilliant thing. And again, I'm, I was not familiar that you could take a different eBay and a different Amazon and link them together. It's very logical, and uh, man, that's just great stuff. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. You know, when did you realize that this is going to become your lifestyle? That this, I mean, you guys were just at a conference. Uh, you still were selling things, so you were still making money while you were gone, right? Yes. When did you realize that, you know, I know you, you got into it in survival mode. You needed to get in it and get started. When did it click for you to say, hmm? I think I could do this for a real, real living long term. We see a future here. Well, when I, when, I, when I was downsized, I knew that I had to make it work. And I had 13 weeks to prove it. And it proved itself within just a few few months. Just, be, just before the 13 weeks ended, we, we covered the 9 to 5 job income. And we were like, yes. So that was the relief. That was the point you said, I'm good enough to do this. That's when your confidence said, we aren't going to fail. The machine isn't going to eat us alive. We're not going to go, you know, whatever, you know, happens to people who really get down on the luck. You could control your destiny. Yes. And, and the wonderful thing about it is then from there, we started getting more refined with getting – getting PDA scanners and s sourcing the right stuff that really sells and, you know, getting systems in place like, you know, proven Amazon course. And with that, the various listing services to streamline your time. And just from there, the various things that have come out from the very, from people that we know online, it just, Learning and learning and learning and f finding better items to sell, it, it's just grown immensely. 
Well, that leads me to a question because I think that that's a good point. Back when you guys were surviving, right, and you found a way to replace your nine to five, both of you were working on the business pretty heavily between the two, yes. right? How many how many hours were you working back then versus what you're doing today? Huh. Um, then it was for me, it was from getting up early and going to bed late. Now I sleep in occasionally. Unless I go to a conference, um, but yeah, we we've got time freedom now that you know, my my son comes to me. He says, you know, we have some problem with the mower. Oh, let's take the mower to a shop and get it fixed. You know, it, 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 yes, it takes me away from my desk. You know, things I'm doing, but it, it's not like I have to call out from work and take time or anything like that. I just you know, I can make it up. It's no big deal. So. Time freedom is is amazing. And I think new sellers need to understand that we've all paid our dues. It is not easy. There is a hump. There is a learning curve. You have to work your way through it. We've all been there. Mm -hmm. But once you do get on the other side of it, Michael's telling you that, I mean, he's supporting a family of seven. (laughs) I mean, that's, that's a pretty big family. And yet you guys were able to make a go of it, and you looked pretty happy, the two of you together. You were smiling the whole time I saw you. Oh, yeah. Um it's just a great story uh, of success, and I mean, you could get huge. Are you going to be one of these guys that have fifty employees and wants this giant warehouse and no. wants uh, to be the CEO and all that kind of jazz? Is no. that you? Is that your no? no. I um, you're left- I'm just going to we, well using services that are out there. Um, we can. We're hoping that, that that's the one issue that we are trying to figure out how to scale up without adding people and do, or, or do we really need a a VA? Um, And we're doing fine now. It's just keep growing and growing. It's been growing about 30% each year. And if you take 30% each year and compound it for five, 10 years, that's a nice income. It's an incredible business. And, you know, um, I tell the story. I, remember, I knew a guy who had a huge earth moving company. You know, the ones that have those giant, you know, half million dollar machines. And he had two hundred and some odd employees. And he said that he makes as much money today as he used to make when it was him and two other guys because yeah. of the insurances and the workman's comps and all the all the things. And when they're slow, he still has to pay payroll and all those right. different things. I think there is a place. You know, I interviewed Joy Packard last week. I don't know if you mm. got to meet Joy at the conference. You know, oh, yeah, Joy. She's amazing. Uh, She's amazing. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the thing that I keep hearing her say, you've got to figure out your why. You know, is your why you want to be a big CEO of a big company? And some people are just naturally gifted in that, and that's their why, right? Or do you want that freedom to be able to go fix that mower with your son where I got to go sit behind a desk at work because I, you know, the boss isn't going to let me out, you know? So I think once you figure that out, um, I think it's just so critical because then it's the magic happens. Right. uh, I think or, we saw some of that at that conference. Right. You know, many, many many people have a charity or a mission that they want to give to, and the more money they make, the more they're able to give to their mission or charity that's really on their heart. I think that's a stewardship, you know, and I'm getting right. ready to give a, a talk at my church about stewardship. And, and stewardship isn't always money. It's the way you manage the time, right? And so right. when you can give that, you're in a position when the minister calls and says, hey, we need some help. Yeah, I'm there. I got nothing to do, you know, right. so very exactly. cool. Exactly. What do you think? What do you think your biggest strength is, Michael? I mean, uh, you, I was going to say, what fear did you have getting in this business? You didn't have any fear. You were going to make it work. So that's, yeah, that's, a non, yeah. that's a non-issue, right? So what, what's your biggest strength? I would say the biggest strength is that I am a nerd. I do understand computers. I do understand websites. I, I, I know the, the geeky aspects of of it all, um, where my wife, who's an eBay power seller on the computer, she does not know how to do things on the computer. Um, she knows how to do eBay. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> she doesn't even have a Facebook account. That's funny. But it works, right. and having two nerds probably wouldn't be good. It might not work. <laughs> yeah. So how about your uh, your biggest weakness, would you say? I would say organization. Um, okay. I, my desk here in my office, it, it's a good thing that this is not video um, <laughs> because I've got tons of receipts just piling up on my desk. 
I need to take a hold of some of the services out there that have some accounting features on them. Did you uh, – you were at the conference and you saw Dan Miller speak, the famous author Dan yes. Miller, just a wonderful man, just a brilliant guy. I, I was fortunate enough to have lunch with wow. him, and we sat and we were chatting, and he said, you know, my office, his office, is his – uh, his I'm sacred sure. ground. His he keeps his office perfect intentionally. He said that's the place my, that is my uh, my my place to go and relax right. because and he keeps it that way and that's his that's his right. thing. And I thought, boy, what great advice, you know, because it does add stress to you thinking about when you're looking at stuff and I'm looking at stuff on my desk. So I can truly appreciate what you're and saying. For the, for the first time, like I said, we were starting over life five years ago. We're we're still renting a house. And when we get into the next house that we're going to actually own, um, I want to have my office be a separate. We're not sure if it's actually going to be part of the house or maybe I want a little out, outer house, a little casita on the outside, a little office that is my office. Well, I, I understand. I think that it's it makes a lot of sense to go and, and just have a place to kind of you know out of the chaos. Mm -hmm. And so, so you already mentioned PAC. So clearly, you're going to recommend PAC if there is something for somebody new that's interested in getting this business. You're saying that the proven Amazon course from Jim Cockrum is the place to Absolutely. go. Absolutely. What I'm looking for is some other podcasts or books that you think that our listeners would benefit to really get them started and get them moving forward if they're stuck or if they're brand new to the business. Do you have any? others that you recommend? Yes. Um, Jim also has a ebook that he, he start, starts off with called, called The Silent Sales Machine. Right now it's on version 9. Um, and you can get that in a, in a, in a PDF ebook format. Um, for, you get the first two chapters free. And if you like it, you can get the, uh, the rest of the ebook for just $5. And it's constantly updating so it, it's an incredible deal. Um, ver, the last version that you, that they had even comes with audios, so you can listen to it in your car instead of reading a book if you don't like reading books. But um, the Silent Sales Machine by Jim Cockrum, um, I believe the um, it, it's silentjim.com that you can just go to okay. that. And, I, and I'll have links for all that, yeah. so I, and I'll take care of that. Yep. And okay. Other than that. Um, he he has a bunch of other courses that someone could do where niching out into like wholesale or private label or whatever. Um, so there's lots of courses that way to continually growing. And um, but Chris Green, he's got tons, tons, tons of videos out there on all all aspects of Amazon and even eBay. He, go, he goes right. back and forth with uh, Jason Jason Smith uh, of the Thrift Hunters show, uh, const going back and forth. Am should you do Amazon? Should you do eBay? And they have a great series of podcasts uh, on on videos on YouTube. Um, Chris also has tons of books that are amazing. Um, his his arbitrage, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage just in-depth courses that he has. They're great. Yep, I recommend yeah. them all. I agree with he's, you. He's an amazing individual himself. Okay, so the final question I always ask everyone is uh, the goal is to take people and move them forward. So they've already been in the business for a bit, and they're trying to go to that next level, right? And they're stuck, right? So give us a tip, a trick, uh, some hint, something that you would suggest that you could offer up for others to move forward. Well, if they're just... Well, as we hear, um, more than 90% of online sellers don't make it. So you have to be in the top and you have to c continually be sourcing for great products. Um, and your little widget might not sell next time or the platform that you're selling on might go down or you might lose your account. But there's other places to sell that widget. Um one one place might not be good for that item you're selling so it's always constantly learning the learning the trade and seeing what best fits in there um so you're always 
it's always good to do personal development, business development, and learning. If maybe you don't do private label now, learn about private label. Maybe, you know, you could grow into that. Maybe you have such knowledge in Amazon or eBay, but the businesses down the street might want a consultant and you could get paid from them to do what you do or just with your knowledge. Right. So the limit of money might be an advantage because you could go get somebody else to use their money to get into that business. Right. So I think that's that's good advice. Michael, I really appreciate you taking the time out tonight. I know you got a house full of people and, and, you, and you got a lot of work to do, but I, I just appreciate it. And I appreciate the simple way you explained it, that we could understand it. You made it so understandable. And I, I really appreciate you taking the time to help others. And uh, it was great meeting you in person. And I wish you and your wife the best. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You too. Thanks for listening to the e-commerce momentum podcast. All the links mentioned today can be found at ecommercemomentum.com under this episode number. Please remember to subscribe and like us on iTunes.